to go ahead and start your presentation as well. Okay. Introduce yourself to them. Okay. okay. Look at my mic yeah. first. <laughs> all about content now. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me here. Uh, thank you, Angel and uh, Chuck. Uh, it's such an honor uh, thinking about uh, coming to an American university to be able to give you guys a lecture and talk about my experience. I mean, a couple years I couldn't even think about it, but now, uh, you know, I'm really thrilled. And most importantly, I wanted to uh, talk about my experience and uh, hopefully inspire you guys. I'm all about entrepreneurship, especially uh, for uh, you know women entrepreneurs. Uh, I highly encourage you guys to jump in the water and try. <laughs> That's uh, probably all the uh, like uh, talk uh, is going to be about. Uh, so let me introduce to you guys who I am. So my name is Alfie Ali. Uh, I am a beauty entrepreneur. I have been in the uh, world of business uh, beauty about uh, 10 years. I have done anything uh, from retail uh, to different services. I've worked in the medical spa and then eventually now I own my own business. Uh, now we do a permanent makeup and lash extension. So. Um, I actually um, moved to the United States uh, in 2013, the year that I graduated from college. Uh, I was born 1988 uh, in uh, western uh, part of China. So I'm one of the minority and uh, most of you guys probably noticed that I don't really look Chinese. <laughs> but uh, that's just my nationality. Uh, so that's a little bit history about myself. And uh, I'm telling you guys this uh, information, first of all, to introduce myself, and second of all, later when I get into it, I will tell you guys why is it uh, relevant to the topic that we're talking about today, okay? So I kind of like halfway semi, uh, as a joke, put this uh, fresh out the boat and two of my pictures. Uh, also, aside from the fact that introducing myself, and I also will come back to this and then uh, tell you guys why I put these pictures. So this is the first year that I uh, came to the United States. My first uh, landing spot <laughs> was New York City. Uh, if you ask a girl like me who, are, uh, who, uh, who was born and raised in China in a very uh, remote part, um, you know, being even being in here is a form of dream come true. So I was really, really excited and I had not much in my pocket, but <laughs> of dream and hope and um, I felt like I was in the sky like anything is possible uh, so that's just kind of like the feeling that I had at this moment and I promise I'll come back and explain why I talk about this with you guys so what do I do in my business now and uh, why am I talking to you guys uh, why do you spend your uh, good uh, afternoon listening to me talking <laughs> So uh, I started my business uh, two years ago. Uh, it's a, I call it a beauty studio. Uh, it's very different than your traditional way of like uh, the lash studio or like lash salon that you go to because the way that we do it is a little bit different. I involve a lot of creativity in my business and a lot of the things that, a lot of the services and the trainings that I offer also in a way that I kind of created it you know it was never really like a blueprint per se uh, so in my business I have three main parts lash extension permanent makeup and also education so I educate uh, beauty professionals like myself whether they want to start their own business or uh, you know they have already went to different types of training wanted to improve upon their skills okay so I have a studio in River Oaks Houston uh, about like 1,500 uh, square uh, footage, and I have multiple rooms. I have beautiful artists uh, like them working for me, and that's how I met Chalk. She came into my studio, uh, worked for me as a lash tech for a little bit, and she was really talented. Uh, so that's how it is. And why did I become an entrepreneur instead of working for other people? And I'm a single mom, so. In some retrospect, working for other people is good in a way because you know it's a secure paycheck. I don't have to worry about how to bring clients and whatnot. But same reason, uh, because I'm a single mom, there are a lot of difficulties for me. I think that I want more in life 
I want to make more money. However, if I work for other people, I don't have the say, right? So if I wanted to have the say, I need to create. And that's how I got into entrepreneurship. And it's very scary at the beginning, but once you get into it, you learn along the way. Uh, so there is a level of flexibility, right? Like I mentioned, and then innovation. So I get to decide what I wanted to do and how I do it. And to me, that's the most attractive part about uh, entrepreneurship in general. And also, I wrote uh, financial success because there's not that many room here. I didn't want to put the letters too a little, but I wanted to point out potential financial success because it's all based on how you execute your plan and how you execute your dreams, okay? So in our, uh, in our studio, there's uh, multiple uh, different things that we do. I have online training and in-person training for the educational part and lash extension and lip blush. I, have, I use these two categories to create the service and the education. So let me, I'll come back to that slide in a little bit. Let me ask you guys, do you guys know by any chance what lip blushing is? Anybody? Okay. Anybody else? Just adding more pigment to your lips um, as a beauty like um, service. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Any anybody else? It's okay. You you don't have to say the right <laughs> answer. <laughs> anybody? Okay. Is it like adding like a pigment to your lips? Because I mean, lip obviously our our lips are on our mouth, and then um, blushing is like the, add the color and add the the pink rosy. Yes. So um, the reason why I didn't ask you guys about lash extension and ask about lip blushing is because uh, it's, a, it's a fairly new concept to a lot of people. However, this has been around for a long time. It's not a new service, okay? Uh, but now through the power of social media, a lot of people are getting to know about the service and the market is getting bigger and bigger. You have no idea the type of clients will come to me and get this service. Just last week, I had a grandma came to me, and she was in her 60s. She found out about this treatment because she was watching a reality show, okay? And how would I even be able to target this client? You just do what you do. But going back to that, this is a fairly new service that's commonly uh, introduced to the general public, right? So like you guys said, it is a form of cosmetic tattooing. Right? It is to add in the pigments to the lips. But also at the same time, most of you guys, the answer is pretty much the same. Adding pigments, adding color to the lips, right? Uh, that's what most people know about this uh, service for. <coughs> most of my clients come to me, they think that's what it is all about. But there's so much to it. For example, their dark lip neutralization. And it's one of the uh, things that is actually bringing me so much money for. Uh, it's because a lot of people have this condition of hyperpigmentation, melanin rich lips, and they want that cosmetic effect. Something fairly permanent, right? They don't have to put jewel on the lipstick all the time to replace that pigment. So for that reason, a lot of people will come and get into it. The, answers that you guys gave me just adding that color on its own it's a very like um how should i say the people who want to do that are not as desperate as your clients who wants to correct the dark pigment because there's a level of insecurity in there right they want to fix that so you as a business owner need to use your skill to serve those people who are more likely to go do business with you, right? And that's where your creativity comes in. So let me just introduce. So this is lip blushing, okay? So this is the client's before, after I sketch it, and after I did the service. Four weeks later, this lips is gonna look very natural and beautiful. It's not gonna be as bright as this color. It's gonna fade out, but 
eventually it's gonna be way better than this and uh, lip blushing can help her lips to look more enhanced, uh, it gives her the definition, and of, of course like the customized color that she wanted. And like I mentioned earlier, we have the dark lip neutralization. A lot of my clients for dark lips, they wanted to modify their lip color. So that's one of the big source of clientele that I have. Another one is hyperpigmentation. The difference between these two are, this is called melanin rich lips, right? Melanin rich can be genetic. It doesn't have to be environmental, but this is environmental, okay? And this is pale lips, right? This is her full face. And also lash extension. I'm pretty sure uh, you guys are fairly uh, familiar with the lash extension, what it is, right? It's very straightforward. We just add a synthetic fiber to the nat human natural hair to make it look fuller and longer, right? Now that the industry has developed so much that we have so many different kinds of skill. Also go back to the creativity, right? Uh, initially in the, uh, I think it was, if I'm not uh, correct, was it in the 70s or the 80s uh, they were just created in Korea? I think it was in the 70s. 70, right? 70, yeah. In uh, North Korea, uh, they came up with this idea of putting the lash extension on people. And at that point, it was just classic, one hair to one human hair, right? And now that industry has developed so much that we come up with so many different kinds of style. Also trace back to your creativity, also money, right? I'll come back to this slide in a little, little bit because uh, Chalk told me that you guys are more interested in learning how to monetize and uh, make money out of your um, creative skills. So I'm gonna come back to those things. And this is one of the questions that I get asked all the time when I'm doing my trainings to my beauty professionals, right? How do I, ser uh, how do I price my service, right? Million dollar question, literally because that's how much money you can make as a solo artist, right? So uh, before I start talking about this, I wanted to engage with you guys a little bit instead of just going off of like a lecture style. <laughs> uh, I wanted to know like some of the uh, questions that you guys have or like some of the information that you wanted to get out of me, learn from me, uh, like of course based on this uh, topic. So uh, for like, uh, about the pricing, how to pro like make money off of your creativity. Like, what are the questions that you guys have? Anybody volunteer to give me some questions? Yes. Um, so I imagine social media is a huge marketing channel for you guys. Correct. I'd love to hear how you found success in marketing like a creative endeavor on social media. That'd be interesting to me. Awesome. Any other questions? Come on, you can ask any questions. Like there's no. Uh -huh. So uh, how do they price? Like for example, my photography service, do I look at someone else's pricing? Like is that a good idea? Good question, I'm gonna answer that. Yes? What do you wish you knew when you started? Oh, so many things, <laughs> but I'll get into that too. Any other questions? Um, I would say um, just how you found like um, as far as like monetizing and like the social media aspect, like mm -hmm. how did you go about like getting it monetized and having it a source of income? Okay, perfect. Or also stable income. Yeah, stable income, yes ma'am. Okay, any other questions? Yes? What are some indicators that your pricing is too low or like too high? Perfect, good question. Any other questions? So does your pricing change when you're first starting and as you're progressing? Should you like do less at the beginning since you want to like break into the market or should you just keep pricing based on your materials and stuff? Good question. That's actually one of my favorite questions and I, uh, I have the answer in the slides for, for you guys for that question. Any other questions? Yes. How did you start? How did I start? Like how do you start? How do you start? Okay, so I think that's enough questions that I got from you guys. Uh, so I think I'm pretty on point on the topic, so I'm gonna uh, talk about that, okay? So um, this is the thing. Creativity, it's, I believe it's a form of art, right? So here's the thing. As a business owner, 
you have to, at least me personally, I kind of wear two different hats, right? On one side, I'm the artist, because I do these services myself. And the other side, I'm a business owner. I have to pay the bills, okay? So anybody can stand in the front and say, I'm a business owner, literally anybody, any one of you, and any one of you should, okay? But until you're really bringing money to the table, you're still a consumer, okay? And you're gonna stay consumer for a very long time if you don't have the urgency to become a business owner, okay? And this is where the trick is. This is where most people fail in business. For example, you ask me a question. I'm a photographer. How do I make money? How do I uh, monetize my skill into a business, right? Is this something that you created out of thin air or is this something that is out there? Uh, out there. Perfect. That's where you start. The question, how do you start? So you need to know what you're doing. In business, there are certain things that is, uh, like come from innovation. You created that. There's no one out there. Then if that's you, go try to figure out how to get a patent, how to get a trademark. That's how you start. In this case, that's something that is out there. You didn't create that. So perfect, that's your starting point. And how do you start? You're gonna first to go do your research about how other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing and see how they're making money off of that. This is start from research, right? The second thing you need to do is, okay, I see what other people are doing it, but most likely they're not really putting the truth out there, not at least the full truth, right? Some of them uh, might just tell you the glorified story, right? So some of them tell you all the struggles and scare you off, right? But that should only be part of your research. The next step is to figure out photography in general, whether photography or um, videography in general is a very wide uh, spectrum. So you need to ask yourself, what type of photographer that I wanna be, right? Because you can't be everything you can't be everything. One of the biggest mistakes, most of the students who come take beauty trainings with me, I kid you not, in one morning I make calls uh, to get, because like, I run uh, Facebook ads, right? I get leads. So when I get the leads, I call them, try to tell them to come take my training. Lord have mercy. They will jump from one tree to another, one tree branch to another. Oh, I thought about, uh, learning how to do lip uh, filler and Botox and uh, lash extension and lip blushing. They're everywhere, right? You are never gonna m make a name for yourself if you wanted to do everything or if you wanted to be good at everything, okay? It's not gonna happen, especially as a small business owner. It's not gonna happen. So you need to figure out which niche that you need to focus on. After you figure that out, then you need to fig figure out what type of clientele should be your ideal clientele. You have to ask yourself that question, okay? All of these things can happen, go ahead. To figure out the niche, you need to try like different things, correct? This stage, you're still brainstorming, you're in your brain, okay? And then you're gonna execute, that's when you execute. So you're gonna brainstorm at this point and think like, okay, I think I am into animal photography. Let's just say as an example, right? So if you're into animal photography, how do you think people will pay you for that, right? right? So go back to the previous thing that I was talking about. You need to identify your ideal clientele. What did I tell you guys earlier? Until you figure out how to make transactions in business, you're a consumer, you're not a business owner yet. And that's why I have a huge problem when people going around call themselves CEO, okay? Everybody's CEO these days, I never call myself that. <laughs> why, I mean, good for you if you have get to that stage, I mean, I'm all about it, but you know, not everybody is that, right? 
But you, your small idea, your small business can go big. So if that's your idea, animal photography, you identify your client, like target clientele, who's gonna pay money for my idea? Who's gonna give me cash? Give me an example. Who do you think will give you money for magazines. animals? Magazines. Who else? Uh, pet owners. Pet owners. Uh, like pet stores. Pet stores. New sources. Huh? New sources. New sources. Anything else? Zoos. Huh? A zoo. Huh? A zoo. 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 Okay. We're getting there. What else? Maybe YouTube. If you make really, really cute content, maybe YouTube can pay you for monetizing, right? What else? But let's just uh, end it here for this example. So you see how important that is for you to identify your clientele, ideal clientele? Now you have a path to take to pursue those clientele, right? It was just my idea uh, earlier. Now I, I think I, I have a chance of creating a business out of this. So where do I go to uh, get money? I might run around if I don't want to spend money on my marketing to a couple of pet stores. Hey, do you guys looking for a photographer to market your business? Or like, you know, for like, uh, do you have any pets that you need to be adopted? Like I can take beautiful pictures and put them on my uh, platform and also provide those uh, images for you, footages for you, and this is how much I charge normally, but this is how much I'm will, willing to do for you as a discount. You go door to door, look for your clients. Yes? And also like Facebook groups or like... Facebook groups. I got so many clients from Facebook groups myself, right? There you go. Don't we have a business already, right? So. Identify your uh, uh, target client uh, clientele. Without cash flowing into your business, you got no business. It's just an idea. You're not an entrepreneur. You're a entrepreneur. Okay. Okay. So, and then another question. Remind me. Did you ask me a question earlier about like when I was gathering questions? No. Oh, sorry. Your question. My question was about what was your identification for if your pricing was too high or too low. Perfect. I'm gonna get into that. And then, what was your question? Um, how to make it like a stable income stable as far income. as like social media and aspect. Social media, and you asked me about social media too, right? Okay, so now that we have an idea about, there's the money in it, we just figured it out. <coughs> pet owners might pay you money. Oh, I wanna have a photo shoot with my pet, right? Like, let's take me on a photo shoot, right? That's a form of a stream of income for, for your business, right? So, you know, there's money there. But how are you going to execute your plan now? Earlier, I told you one source. Like, you know, you go door to door asking for the, for the, uh, asking for the client, right? And there's so many different ways. So first, you have to figure out how you're going to run your business, right? And all of these factors, are going to go into how you price your service. So first of all, in my business, it's a physical store, right? I do services to people, so I got myself a studio. So I need to figure out how big of a studio do, do I have? What kind of overhead do I have? All of these things I need to figure out before I start my business, right? So, and that will reflect into my pricing. Why? Because if I'm just a lash artist who's have my uh, massage bed in my, uh, uh, like, you know, in my arm, going door to door trying to sell my service, I don't have to pay thousands of dollars in rent. So, of course, that probably will be cheaper. Or, guess what? I have a good, rich friends. They don't mind me going to their homes for, for uh, their convenience. So, I got a good clientele, then I can charge them a little bit more. But guess what? I don't have to... Uh, pay money on, on the location. So there's always like a trade-off, right? So that's something that you need to think about and consider. And your skill set, right? Uh, one of you guys asked me like, uh, are you, you asked me, are you gonna go low price and then go higher? I'm gonna answer that in a little bit, but let's, this is kind of like the root of that question, right? So skill set, how good am I? You really have to be honest with yourself. 
one thing as an entrepreneur is that you you have to be so brave to actually have the courage to jump in the water but also at the same time you cannot fool yourself if you fool yourself you're not going to be able to stay in the business you can start a business you won't be able to stay in the business so let's go back to the photography again so I go to the pet store right ask for uh, them to pay me commercial fee how good am I am I just an amateur who's interested in getting to this industry or am I somebody who is established right what type of camera do I use you know what quality that I can offer you right so that's something that you need to factor into your pricing too. Market value, right? Earlier I said, don't be full of yourself. Charge your worth, but don't be full of yourself. Why? Your idea has to fit in certain level in the market value. So I, for example, charge my service uh, for the lip blushing for $699, right? Have I charged that price from a lot of people? Yes. A lot of people paid. Yes, absolutely. But most of the time, that's not the uh, price that I actually end up selling. I give them some discount. Why? Because the market that I live in, in Houston, Texas, this city is known for its affordability. Am I right? Right? So people here are less likely to pay your premium price like New York City and uh, California and Miami right so that's your market value okay I don't care how good I am sorry so I don't care how good I am but I still have to stay competitive in a marketplace okay and then the materials am I shooting that picture with my iPhone and I have really good editing skills and I just figure it out at home or am I investing in a camera like that which is five thousand dollars you don't think you want to make that money back? Because based on your tax return, you deduct it as a tax, uh, I mean, uh, expense. You don't want that money back, to come back to your business? It has to reflect into your business, uh, pricing. Okay? So, these are the things that you need to consider. And then, another thing, I put it separately, also it should be in the part of the earlier slide, is the marketing. Do you do marketing? What type of marketing do you do, right? So marketing really comes down to answer this question. What is your customer acquisition cost, right? You have to acquire customers, therefore bringing money to the business. What did I say? If you're not creating transaction, you're not an entrepreneur, right? So we have to bring money. So in order to bring money, we have to have customers. And how am I acquiring those customers? I personally run ads. I run Facebook ads, social media ads, and stuff like that, right? So I have a customer acquisition cost. Maybe not immediately, week to week, day to day. Uh, it fluctuates, but maybe annually, it comes out to a set price. And do I spend money on ads? Or do I just walk door to door? Because I'm new, I don't have a, a budget to, to invest in my business. So, you know, those are the things that you need to think about, right? If you don't spend money, you don't have to charge that much. If you do spend money, it has to go into your uh, pricing. Step, do I have to be uh, taking the responsibility of other people? If you do, then you have to factor that into your business as well, right? That should be your cost. You have to make this much money in a month to your business in order to cover your basis. Let's not even talk about the profit. Most of my first year of business, did I make money? I made a lot of money. But guess what? I also give it all away to my staff, to my landlord, to everybody else, right? So that's the reality of business. So these are the things that you need to think about when you're pricing. Where, where else uh, am I gonna be able to give that money to my staff or to my landlord if I don't get it out of my clients? Am I right? So this, goes back to the question that you asked me earlier and I'm gonna go into details to talk about it but here I wrote it in dark black letters do not use the low price first then increase your price as your skill goes uh, along uh, model I again I am personally as a business owner 
as an artist, I'm extremely against that type of uh, mentality. Why? Because for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, right? Your price has nothing to do with where you at now. It's one of the factor, but not all of it. Okay? So I will use this as an example for you guys. Uh, I will use uh, this as an example to explain to you guys. Maybe now like you're, you're, you don't know what I'm talking about. Let's say uh, as a lip blush artist, right? The day that I announced that I offered this service, you probably can learn from this too. So the day that I announced this service, I was new, as new as it gets. Was I the best permanent makeup artist? No. Good first year, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. That's the truth. That's the truth. Seriously. But I didn't let anybody know that I was sweating. I didn't know. How the hell am I going to make money? Would you give me money if I say I suck? Huh? Would you let me tattoo your face permanently? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. Right? You see where I'm getting at? You can't tell people that I, my price is so low, that in itself screams I suck. Am I right or wrong? Even as a client, you come to someone. What did I say? Market value. Anybody here, have, anybody have done lash extension? Maybe lip blushing is a little bit a foreign idea to you guys. Lash extension, have you done it? How much do you think average? I'm not talking about home-based artists, okay? Like, uh, what about the, uh, like, if you go to, like, a studio? In general, how much do you think you will pay for a volume set? A little over 100. A little over 100? It's about 150. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. Right? And you know that as fact, right? And here I am, I said, I charge $30. <laughs> right? What is the first thing that you would think? What else? It's a scam. Why? I'm cheap. Get it with me. It's a scam. It's too suspicious. There you go. What else? What do you think if I say 30? Huh? You're not confident you always. You guys answer my question. I don't even have to teach you. You see, when you're an entrepreneur, like what I, I, I'm constantly going back to the same concept. It's all about creating transactions, right? So in order to create transaction, who do you need to learn the most? Your cons the consumers, your clients. So if you yourself put yourself in a client's perspective, if you think that, shit, I'm much willing to pay $150 than someone who wants to charge me $30. What question did you just answer for yourself? Right? So uh, you know your skill set has nothing to do with your pricing, OK? Um, going back to that, oh, uh, so if my skill set has nothing to do with it and I suck, I'm not good enough yet, right? So how do you, how do you bring client and like to, to charge people? This is something, I, I don't know if I had taught you that, I sure have taught you, you call it modeling fee, at least in my business. Okay, modeling fee. So this is a very beautiful way to conceal the fact that I'm not good enough, right? I give you discount, but I give you a little bit scarcity. I said, hey, this week we're doing a special. We're uh, looking for three models for $30 each, limited spots. Who is my takers, right? Who is going to be willing to model for me? Because I want to create content. You see? I just put it in a very beautiful packaging. I'm not a scam anymore, but I'm still charging you $30. Why am I not charging more? Because I suck. I don't tell you that. But and then guess what? If you don't like my work, I can tell you, honey, normally people pay $150. I just charge you $30. You can complain when you didn't pay the full price, right? So 
This is how you do it at the beginning. Did I ask, answer your question? At the beginning, when you're starting off, this is how you do it. You gain models, you gain work, you still have to work, you still have to improve upon your skills, and most importantly, buy bread, right? So that's how you do it. You get yourself a consumer, not just my business. For example, let's go back to that photography business. You're gonna say, now I am uh, like looking for some uh, collaboration work. I want to create some content. So that's why like, I'm looking for someone who is like, you know, like a store owner or something who's willing to work with me. I normally charge this much price and I'm willing to do it for $50 for you for the whole thing. But you're gonna let me also use the footages too. So I'm not giving you the full release and not letting me use it. We're gonna share the release for my photography. There you go, you put some conditions to it, but you did give them a discount and give them a little bit of scarcity, right? This offer is not gonna last forever. That's how you get clients. But guess what? From day one, from day one, price yourself in a healthy range in the marketplace. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I did it. I will go back to my lip blushing as an example, okay? I took my training, my training, I learned in last year, March, okay? Last year, March, I was a fresh beginner artist. Like, work is not good enough. But guess what? Late March, if you go on my website, my price is $6.99 for lip blushing, right? Why did I do that? Am I full of myself? No, I'm smart because I factor all of those things into my consideration, okay? Why? Because I have a studio in River Oaks, Houston. It's one of the most affluent area in Houston, Texas, right? I pay marked up high-end price for my rent. I need to make that money back. And what else? I have people rely on me. I have to factor that into uh, my pricing. I'm a single mom, I have to buy food for my baby. I have to factor that into my pricing. So all of these combined, I did a research. What is the average price in Houston, Texas for lip blushing? It's $500 to $1,500 per treatment based on your artist, right? So after I find out about this, I thought, oh, $700, I can live with that. If I have this much clients, it can cover my cost and I can still be able to make money, profit out of it, cool. So this is how I price myself. I didn't go down to the lowest range for $500 because I'm not in a suburb. Maybe if I were in like some small shopping center in Katy, Texas or like Sugarland, it would have been a different story, but I'm in the eye of Houston. So I wanted to charge a little bit high end price, right? Not the lowest spectrum. So I marked myself a, a healthy range, $699. I didn't go to the 1500 because I'm greedy, right? Also because I'm new, I'm not there yet. You get there when you're just booked out for the whole year or two. And then I will increase at that price and that's a different story. But I think 699 is a really healthy price for this particular service, right? So for your photography business, you can do the same. How much average photographer charge? Average, not the best, average in Houston charge. How much is the best one charge? You find someone in the middle, okay? So now that I have my price set up, do I actually, last year in March, when I start doing this, did I actually start charging $6.99 for everybody? No, I'll starve. No, nobody's gonna pay me $6.99. Did you pay me $6.99? Oh, man. How much did you pay me? $4.99. $4.99, I gave her a discount, right? So why do I do that? That's how I grow within my price range. But at the beginning, she is like later in the picture, but really, really at the beginning. How did I start? Okay, now I have this ridiculous price of $6.99. Absolutely not matching my skill set, right? How do I go there? So I put out a post. I even spent money to market it. And I said, I'm looking for a model, right? To create content, same thing I said. And I need five people for um, free, 
but you need to let me use your footage. So it sounds like a collaboration, but in reality, I just want to practice. Okay, that's the truth. And the first batch of people, the free ones, are my existing clients who have been doing lash extension with me, or my friends. Uh, it started that way. Guess where? Guess what? I used these people, collected a portfolio for myself really quickly. The first month, I worked myself to death. If I tell you, you wouldn't even believe it. I took 45 lip blush client in one month. She's a lip blush and she's a permanent makeup artist. Tell me one month as a beginner, 45 clients, how much of a workflow is that? Flow. Oh, it's a lot. Huh? It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Each procedure for an expert takes three hours. Mm -hmm. Three to four. Three to four hours for an expert, okay? Me, as a fresh, it took me all day for one person. So for me to squeeze in 45 people, of course I grow, my skill grow along the way, but I literally work, worked myself to death. And I'm not encouraging you to work yourself to death, but I'm saying that you have to work so hard to improve upon your skill to match your ideal pricing. Okay? So go back to your photography business. You keep knocking doors, you keep knocking doors, you keep asking people, hey, can I, can I take a picture? Hey, your dog is so cute, I go uh, walk my dog in the park. And in reality, I'm in the park a little longer, right? Why? Because I, I wanna walk? No, I wanna catch some pet owners. Like, hey, cute dog. <gasps> like, and then you start talking and small talking and it's like, I think like, have, like you know, it would be great to have a, uh, uh, like a photo shoot with your dog, don't you think? Have you done, done that? This is what I do for a living. You wanna try? Hey, like normally I, uh, like, you know, I charge this much price, your dog is cute. Guess what, I'm gonna give your dog a cute discount. There you go, there you go, right? So that's how you start at the beginning. You build a portfolio. Your focus is not that person's discounted money that they give you. It, it's worthless to you. Guess what is uh, everything to you? The portfolio that you created. Going back to the steady income. Is that the question that you asked me? Okay. How am I gonna be able to make steady income? I need to have a substance to be able to tell people, hey, let me tattoo your face permanently because I'm good enough. Okay? That's what the portfolio is for. Guess what, when you do that, income is so stable that you wouldn't believe it. Why? I have people, believe me when I say this, I have people fly from um, El Paso, one of my clients. I had one girl came from California, Dallas. Dallas. If you had told me a year ago, I would have people fly in or drive all the way to take my training and then to uh, do services with me, I personally would have laughed at yourself. I would, but it happened. It happened, you know? So that's why you have to work so hard to build portfolio and that's where the money is. So if you wanted to make steady income, make a name for yourself, work so hard at the beginning and anybody in the future, you go trying to convince, you are gonna be able to say, you know what? I'm gonna give you a discount, I like you, but the reality is I can go lower than this price. Why? Because the service takes me three and a half hours, four hours to do. It doesn't cover my expenses. I mean, I like you, but I'm not here to do charity, so I have to at least make this much money. When you say this, it makes sense to a client, they're willing to pay, okay? So that's another thing. And then, one question that one of you asked me, marketing. Uh, social media and that's a big thing that I will t uh, talk to, to you guys about I personally created my whole entire business through social media Instagram in particular okay why because it fits my business model okay for example if I'm a plumber I mean of course even for plumbers social media can be big right but what I do is a vis visual work visual art am I right before and after, like your lips look so pale, and after I touched your lips, 
wow, you have a beautiful lips anymore. You don't have to go to your uh, injector's office anymore because your lips are not that small to begin with, right? So you, you see, it's a visual business and that's why I use social media. And the second reason is because everybody is on social media. You would be surprised the clientele walk through my door, will get my uh, service and I ask them like, where did you find me? On Instagram, the 60 year old grandma told me. Yeah, all of you guys are on social media, are you not? Right? The guys are like this dads, the 50 year old dads, they're on social media. Would you have expected that? Huh? No? I mean, aside from the exotic content, but you know, like everybody's on social media and that's where you need to target, that's where you need to, to be. Even if it's not, if, even if majority of your clients are not gonna be there, you need to be everywhere on social media. For example, me, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I am on YouTube, I'm on everything that I can think of or you know can invest my time in. I'm on everywhere, right? So social media will bring you so much money and it did for me, especially in my business. There's Everybody is there. I can just show you show them my work without them being inside of my studio, right? And I have gotten so many clients who absolutely have no idea what the blushing is. Have absolutely no idea. Through the power of Instagram. They start watching me, they start finding about that, they start getting to know the benefits of that. Boom, they call me. They give their money, hard-earned money to me. Even if I give her the uh, discounted price, $500, $500 is not easy money for just average American to spend. So if they're willing to come spend that money for me, that means that through my social media, I attracted them, right? So in a tra fairly traditional, I want to point out, fairly traditional way, for example, Google. Google marketing is a fairly different way of marketing because it's pool uh, advertising, right? Someone has to go on Google and say, lip blushing near me, lash extension near me. Am I right? So these people are already halfway cooked and halfway interested, right? But social media is great. You're getting all these clients from everywhere. Why they're flying from El Paso to me because I was near them in El Paso? No, I was on social media, you see? The possibility today out there is so crazy shocking that you guys couldn't even put your mind to it if you don't try to be open-minded. But it's all through social media. That's why everybody you can think of is on social media. Every business owner, right? So first of all, how particularly, I wanna be very specific, not just give you like this broad idea of like, Go on social media. I want to be very specific, exactly tell you how to make money off of social media, right? First of all, let's not think of you as a business owner. Let's think of you as a consumer, right? So you go on my uh, social media. If I, for example, paid money to advertise my page, right? You came to my page. If I had five pictures, they're decent, not the best, not the best, but they're decent. If that's the case, how much, like, would you, would you be more convinced to do business with me? No. Okay. How do you think if my page was, uh, would be like that you would actually spend money on me? You'd probably have to have some contact details on there. Um, you'd have to have like a few stories that like highlight different things you do or whatnot. Do a long post history as well. Um, that would be a good start. Okay. So what do you need my long post story for? Uh, some credibility. See, like, oh, this person's been in business a long time. Wow, they do this, this, this. Are you asking, you're talking about the history of how, uh, how like long that post has been. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, it's two years. That gives you more credibility than if you just started six months ago. Right? How about the amount? Uh, amount is important, too, absolutely. Um, how important to you personally? Uh, probably not that important past a certain, like, if, as long as, like, you have, like, so much that, would, like, it, it prompts me to scroll, it's probably not that important. But if there's only like five, then I, like I can't scroll. That's okay. probably, you know, has warning signs for me. 
Okay. Would it be fair if I generalize it and say it's a, I have a good portfolio set up in there? Yeah. For fair, sure. fair, fair enough generalization? Okay. All right. So you see, that's what I teach my artists. You guys have no idea you have the answer to all of your questions. Just switch the side. Switch the side. Stop trying to think of it as this like entrepreneur that's trying to get all the answers. Switch the side. Be a cu customer. It, that switch changes so fast when I involve money into it. So fast. And all of you all of a sudden start having all the answers. For example, I will uh, use you as an example. Let's say you want to do lip blushing with me, okay? And my price is $1,000. And let's say you have a $1,000 to invest and, and, and spend on that service. So you, you don't have problem for the fact that you wanted to spend uh, the $1,000 and my price is as such, but if you do, what are the questions that you, you have for me? I would say the quality of the work, mm -hmm. like seeing what types of products you use, mm -hmm. and then like what results you have in mm -hmm. your previous customers. My previous customers. Mm -hmm. What about my previous customers? Their testimonial? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You see, you guys are answering. Tells me, or actually, I had this student who came drive all the way from Dallas. My my training price is two thousand eight hundred dollars for lip gloss training. Okay. She drove all the way from Dallas, paid close to $3,000, stayed in the hotel for four days. How much did that cost her? All of that just to take my training, okay? So she couldn't find someone to teach her in Dallas? Yes, there are people, right? I used social media and I put all of that thing that you just mentioned on my social media. I convinced her, guess what? If you going with the guy who is next door, lip blush training near me, that guy, you're probably taking a chance. But here I am, even though I'm all the way in Houston, but I'm showing you through my social media how good I am. You have seen my clients, what they're talking about. You have seen my pictures before and after. You have seen how much money I'm making. You have seen how much people are coming to me personally, how much clientele that I have. Obviously, I'm making money. You have seen my address. I'm in River Oaks, Houston. Obviously, I, I am so far able to pay my rent. Those things tells you stuff, doesn't it? Right? And that's exactly I put on my social media every single of that detail. Okay? And that's how I was able to get these, uh, attract these people. Here's another thing. For lash extension too, I didn't go to the route of being a lash tech. And I hate that word. I hate that word. I'm allergic to that word. Why? Because you are lowering your bar. Lash tech is someone who works in a lash studio in next to the nail salon or behind the nail salon. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Like there's so many artists like that are amazing. But what I'm trying to tell you is like, they don't have too much creativity. They just do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Brain is shut up. They just do it, right? My clients come to me because I tell them how amazing of a style that I can offer them, how good my work is. I attracted them. I attracted them. And all through the power of social media, right? Can anybody do it? You betcha. Everybody can do it. Who am I? Most of you, I am Uyghur American. Do you even know what Uyghur is? Nobody knows. There you go, there you so go. Me. <laughs> Except for that's a funny story. You know? Okay, yes, I'm Uyghur. So we're one of the minority in China, like nobody knows about us. Like even people in China know, uh, don't know about us. Uh, majority of us are in China. Some of them are in Kazakhstan. Apparently that's where she was from. We just recently uh, crossed paths. And uh, we have small group in Turkey, but other than that, I'm nobody. I'm literally nobody. If I can do it, why couldn't you? English is my third language. I didn't speak a word in English until I graduated college, which was 10 years ago. 
Yeah, 12 years ago, I lied. <laughs> I didn't speak a word in English. A lot of people see me and say, oh, wow, your English is so good. You must have, like, you know, grow up here and this and that. Well, no. Like, I, I was just, like, I was just talking to the wall until I can say a word right. That's how much effort that you have to put in if you wanted to make things right. But is it possible? Going back to my original question, yes. You'll be surprised what kind of money people will pay you. Every single one of you sitting here, you can make big things happen. Big, 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 big things. I just started my business two years ago. I am nowhere, nowhere near where I wanna be. I'm barely profiting out of my business. Two years, I have been bleeding into my business money-wise. If I had just seen it as cash value, I would have called quit long time ago. It's not worth it. It's even stupid for me to be putting money and losing money in my business. Why am I still here? Because I am focusing on the bigger picture. Okay? So your creativity is going to go a long way because you, how should I say it, like, the same service, whether it's lip blushing or eyelash extension, I'm just mixing up certain things, like the style or this and that, or the way I talk about it. Like I'm creating this interest, have people to pay higher price for me by doing the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Where do you trace that back into? Creativity. If you don't create, you don't innovate, why people should, should uh, give you money? You know, you always, always, always have to put yourself in customer's perspective. And therefore, how do you take money out of their pocket? Okay? So, am I boring you guys so far? No? no? I'm doing good? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, I, um, this is something that I advertise a lot. Okay, I advertise a lot, but and then uh, I also teach when I do my training. I teach my students, okay? Is this simple? Very simple, actually, and I'm going to show you guys how simple it is because I made the slides, okay? I'm going to show you guys how simple that is. Is it easy? That's a different question. What did I tell you guys? One month, I worked 45 models as a beginner artist. I work myself to death. If you want to reach certain destination, you have to put in certain level of commitment and hard work. It's not magic. Most of you guys are in college. Kids, you guys age, you want everything instantly. Am I right? You have 30 second attention span. Better yet, 10 seconds. Three. Three seconds. Because <laughs> my reels that I created, need to capture your attention the first three seconds to five seconds otherwise you scrolled up to the next one am i right and then you will consider if you stay and watch my 30 seconds content am i right yeah so that's that's what you guys are uh this day myself is also included maybe i last a little longer because you know i was grow i i was born and raised in a different country so anyhow so Going back to that, if you're, uh, everybody is like, you know, uh, oh, I, sorry, for a second I forgot what I was talking about, now I came back. So, this is not a complicated thing. Anybody can do it. Have you heard people say like, oh, like the first million is easy and this and that? I'm not there yet, hopefully soon. I'm not a millionaire yet, but uh, my point is, people who have been there, done that, will tell you it's easy. Right? So I'm gonna tell you, I'm not, I don't want to, like I wanna really differentiate that these two words, it's simple, but it's not easy, because you really have to put in the work and the commitment, okay? Your attention spent on social media can be shorter, I'm okay with that, but last a little longer in business, please. That's when you make money, okay? So I always say how to make Six figure, how to become a six figure uh, solo artist. Can you do it? I did it the first year around that I had my business. I did it. Okay? 
So this is how I did it. And I'm gonna be very specific with you guys. I planned everything. I planned everything. Did every single transaction fit into my plan? Absolutely not. But did it eventually? Absolutely yes. But did I have my structure and plan from day one? I did. I sure did. From day one. So, first thing you need to do is you need to structure your daily schedule. Because someone has to physically do it. You want to be a photographer. You want to go knock on doors. Which days are you going to go knock on doors? Which days are you actually going to do the shoot? Okay? So you plan yourself for an hour photo shoot. You think it's just one hour on your book? No. You have to get there, don't you? And after that, you might get hungry. What is your lunch time? And then you have to drive home. You have to structure this and you have to plan all of these things. So in my business, for example, I use this one uh, like with the lash extension schedule because lip blushing takes a little longer. So look at it, my day on a service day, this is how it goes. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is the first time slot that I have. The second one, excuse me, second one is 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., 1 p.m. And then the following is one to three, three to five. Just like most of your parents who go work for uh, other people, uh, you know, I also have a healthy set schedule. I mean, if I volunteer and stay later for my clients, that's a different story. But I get to go to work, start at 9 a.m., and I get to finish at 5 p.m. to pick up my kid. Okay? So you cannot do that if you let your clients take the charge. You have to structure that yourself. For example, you just go in and freestyle. Oh, just book a photo shoot with me. We'll just go by however we feel like. Uh, your dog start doing cute tricks. I'm staying longer. No, it's a shitty business plan. No, you have to communicate with your clients ahead of time. Look, for my one hour photo shoot, I'm gonna see you at this place in one hour I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna give you this much footage. I'm gonna uh, give you this much edited fo footage and then additional is this much. You always wanted to take your time to create a little bit additional content so in case that client wants to buy more photo, that dog was acting so cute that day, you took a couple of cute pictures and the person who's willing to spend money on stupid things like dog photo shoot probably wanted to buy some more dog pictures because that dog was so cute in that picture. You need to plan that as a business owner, okay? You need to have room for all of those things. But does it always pan out that way? Absolutely not. But you have to do it. So this is how I structured my day. So four appointments a day, I can fit in a, a refill and I can also fit in the, uh, the full set. So, as in, uh, like how many days do I work? Earlier I talked about how many days do you go knock on doors? Which is your admin day? If you're a solo artist or so, solo entrepreneur. And then which are the days that you're gonna do the services, right? You have to plan all of those things. My working day is actually, I, I'm open Saturday, half day two, but most of the time this is my schedule. I plan all of these things ahead of time. So now let's go back to the question. How do I become a six figure um, solo artist? How do I become a six figure uh, photographer? Do you want that money? $120,000 a year sounds good to you? And you want more of course, but let's start from there. Sounds good to you as a yes. six figure? Okay, so write it down, write it down. It sounds so simple. Most of you guys don't do it. 95% of you, to be exact. You don't write it down. You just think about it. Write it down. $120,000. So, in order to make that amount, average monthly, I have to make $10,000 a month, right? And then I have to make $2,500 a week, $500 a day. 
that gives me per client I need to charge at least $125. This is at least, right? Do everyone pay me this much money? No. But at least you should come up with a number. If you don't even have an idea of per transaction value that you need to make per day and how many appointments that you need to squeeze in in that one day to be able to make how much money on that week, you're not gonna get to that $120,000. You're not. Go back to your question. Am I answering all of your guys' questions one by one? Because I remember. You said steady income. Steady income comes from planning it, comes from structuring it. You cannot freestyle it. You can't. You can't. You might have a freestyle personality. Fine. Do that in your own time. Okay? When you're in business, if you want to call yourself an entrepreneur, you have to plan it. You have to structure it. And I structure everything to the transaction. Okay. Now, can I be a six-figure artist? All I have to figure out is charge people at least $125 or more per transaction. And I need to find uh, four of those people every day so the days that you don't have four of them you need to start shaking crap I haven't met my status quo yet how do I get the next person let me go uh, this and that how did I start it how do one start right you think the day that you open up a business and jump on the, to the front and say I am an entrepreneur I have a studio and people are just gonna run into your business just because you spend some money on an ad and people are just gonna get com uh, convinced and like buy stuff from you just off the bat. I have so many artists who run an ad for a week and then they think they spend money and then they got scared. They're like, oh crap, I just spent a hundred dollars four days. Nobody booked anything with me. This is all comes down to not having a structure, not having a plan. You didn't budget your business. You just want, you freestyled it. Oh, I have a hundred dollars in my pocket. Let me run some ad and see how it goes. Instead of saying, I have a hundred dollars to spend and I want to use this hundred dollars in one week. So you go to Facebook and you put your daily budget to $20 a day or $15 a day. There goes, you spend the $100 healthily, okay? Instead of saying like, I have $100, run it until my money goes out. And then after that, oh, I didn't get clients. Like, I'm just like done. No, stretch it out, plan it, okay? And then the day that you're not getting that kind of clients, what did I do? When I first started my business the first month, when I had clients, I'll do my clients. The, day, the times that I didn't have clients, I have snatched people out of grocery store. I have snatched people out of uh, Starbucks. I have done that, for real. Like I can show you like specifically on some of the videos and pictures on my social media. I can tell you I run into that girl on the coffee shop. I offered a free service, but can you come now? Why? Because instead of sitting there not making money and feel sorry for myself, I wanted to create a portfolio. First, I gathered a portfolio, and then second, when I put it out there on my social media, and people think that, you think I'm gonna go on my social media and say like, this is a not paying client? Absolutely not. You're gonna assume that, oh dang, that girl is killing it. From day one, she has clients uh, paying money for her. And then they're gonna be more convinced and then the paying ones are coming. That's how it happened. In two years, I have served over 2,000 clients, 2,000 people. A lot of them are return clients, but think about bringing that many people through my door. You think everybody just run into my business from the day? Well, no, it didn't happen that way and it's not gonna happen that way. I don't care if it's 2024 or 1920 or maybe it was tougher in 1920s, but you know, you, you got the gist. 
it, it's never gonna happen that way just because you have decided okay going back to that I'll give you guys as an example I'm not gonna tell you who but I personally know this uh, social media influencer he is big on uh, Instagram and social media on, on uh, uh, Instagram on the heydays Lord like everybody is like sending sponsor this and that this and that they're making money they didn't keep up with the consistency and also it was just like a three minute uh, hyped up fame I think it was because another celebrity or somebody kind of like put his name out there so everybody start int getting interested in that person so the follower gained up so much and then afterwards there's no substance to that uh, like platform little by little that guy I the other day uh, I saw him like walking around on the street with his pajamas and then one of his friends told me that he couldn't pay rent I mean sad story but what I'm trying to tell you is don't look at what's on social media and think that everything is just gonna be easy it's simple but it's not easy you have to work for it you have to earn for it but it starts with plan so per client that's how much money that I'm gonna get in order to make that okay so let's go back to the reality in my business for example these are the services that I offer my lash extension service for a full set is $129 to $250 depending on the style okay lip blushing is $699 but sometimes I give discount so answer that question is it higher than $125 Yes, per transaction, right? However, sometimes I do lash refill. My refill price is about $99, okay? It's less than $125, but this makes up for that. Am I right? So my training is $2,800, right? Wow, so why don't I just sit in the corner and not taking lash clients and just like take students? Because some the likelihood of someone who is just paying you that high of a price right off the bat or like immediately when you start marketing is lower so the amount is lower therefore comes to another thing that you need to consider in your business is like you need to have a hierarchy in pricing you have to have different hierarchy for example going back to that pho photo shoot business by the way I can give you an example with any business I can uh, make a business out of it so going back to the photography business okay so you can do like you can offer like a mini shoot right so you you have a standard regular photo shoot uh, maybe you charge five hundred dollars per session and you give about 15 edited photos and whatnot right that's your standard photo shoot you go on your social media and say March special April special we're offering mini photo shoot for a hundred dollars for only five uh, people limited uh, spots take it immediately people start messaging you yeah I don't want to spend five hundred dollars and I don't need that many pictures anyways you may as well just do that hundred dollars and then guess what you're gonna <laughs> upsell them those additional cute pictures that they wanted but they it's not included in their package but nonetheless you need to have a hierarchy because low price brings people this takes time okay and then another thing you need to do also very similar to the hierarchy hierarchy is just the price differences okay you can be doing the same exact thing with the different pricing for example the photo shoot is the same thing the price hierarchy multiple stream of income in your business for example in my business I have the service I have the education and I also have a product line okay so all of these uh, things if I didn't create it it's not there it's not there once I created created my website I created a price menu I created all these list of things right once I put it out there is everybody just walk into my business and getting all three of them just because I have multiple stream of income no but guess what I attracted let's see this is uh, actually a great example for this I attracted let's see as my lip blush client she told me she always had it I had this like pale lips she wanted to have definition add color and yada yada she came in 
did her lips with me as my client. After that, she asked me that, Yo, I, I saw you offer training too. Like, how is that? So we start talking. And then she was convinced that, you know what? I, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with, with my life. This sounds like something that I'm interested in. So she ended up taking my training. Multiple stream. Okay? And it made her lip blush money. Okay? And then I trained her. I made her training money. And guess what? Now she's working with me. I'm still somewhat making money from her, but mm -hmm. she is also making her training money back because uh, she's making money uh, uh, off of doing the services, okay? But if I didn't create the service menu or take the leap of faith to say, I want to do training, I want to do this, where do you think this money is coming to me? No, you have to create a multiple stream under the same umbrella. But don't do this too early on in your business. Get good at one thing first, develop, but and then go along the way, try to multiply that under the same umbrella, okay? Under the same umbrella. Don't go crazy about like, oh, I do a permanent makeup, and then I also do tooth jam. I see people do that. What the hell? Okay. I, I think it's very stupid. I personally think it's very stupid. I mean, you know, if you have been around in the business for so long and you have people coming in all the time anyways, then you offer different things just to make extra money, by all means do that. Even put some cute uh, stuff like as a retail in your shop to make more money. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is like as a main thing to offer, go in front of people to say, this is what I do. Don't make it too complex at the beginning because you get people confused. They don't know if you're the lip girl or the eyelash girl or, or a, a, a tooth gem uh, guy. They don't know. You get them confused. Do one thing under the same umbrella and then to develop, to, to improve upon that. Okay? So going back to that, if you market yourself and do all the things that I told you to do, I guarantee you, if you don't freestyle yourself, if you constantly think about, I'm gonna charge $125 per client, today, heck, I have to have four clients. If you don't have the sense of urgency, you're never get, gonna get there. But if you do have the sense of urgency, guess what? Compared to, for example, the two of you started at the same time. She gave up because the second day she didn't get four clients. You both have the goal. In reality, does it pan out that way? Like I told you earlier, no. But guess what? You have to have the sense of urgency. And then you go the next day, you're like, crap. Yesterday I had three. Today I'm gonna get five, right? That's how you do it. You have to have a goal and it has to be very specific. Have a big number, separate it into small bite-sized chunk. You can handle that. $125 per client, you don't think you can handle it? You should at least. One of the disagreement me and uh, Chuck had when she was uh, starting with me. Uh, remember what she said? Would you like to share with us? When I first started? About the pricing, that $50 thing. Oh yeah, when I first started, I was uh, pricing up for $50 for like a modeling fee in order to get content so I can post on my Instagram. And that's basically how you gotta start until you're able to be confident and match up your skill set level with the price that you can offer. Yeah, so she, I can tell from the get-go, she was so talented, like I really liked her work and she was so attention to details, like I really liked it. But at the beginning, what she didn't understand is that she didn't have a sense of urgency. She thought like, you know, $50 is good enough of money, I just wanted to practice, good. Call it a modeling fee. But and then guess what, have the sense of urgency. You want more, 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 more. 
okay, my status quo is I need to have four people today. So I'm okay with $50, then maybe I should get eight people today. As long as the time wise, like if it's manageable, if you cannot go higher on the price, go higher on the amount that you service, right? And then if you have a goal, guess what? The reality is you might not even be able to get four people. You might not even be able to get two people that day, but you have a goal and that is going to give you a sense of urgency. I didn't meet my numbers. How am I going to become the six figure uh, person that I want? Uh, I said I want to be. That's how you get there. Okay. So I wanted to talk about this really quick. Here's the thing. Creativity. I love that. Now people are making money off of this. Like, have you guys uh, heard like life coach? Yes. Have you heard of that? Yes. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I have friends, kid you not, I have friends hired life coaches. I have. And I asked them like, what the hell do you all talk about? What is the service of exchange here? Some people, parents didn't raise them right to be disciplined enough that they need someone to text them during the day and say, have you eaten? Did you eat healthy? What time did you wake up? Did you stay within your plan? That is what life coach is. They're gonna tell you, just like what I teach you just now, how to set a big goal, cut them into small pieces, and then stay consistent with that. That's what life coach is. People make money off of that. That's creativity, right? That's creativity. So, but, you also need to identify that is there a market to it, right? Now there is for life coach. I was born and raised in a different country. I was born and raised in China. Boy, were we hungry. We created this whole concrete jungle in the span of 30, 40 years in China. 40 years ago in China, people were starving. Starving. Now it became one of the richest countries in the world. My, my dad, when he first came to Houston, he was like, this is what you were dying to come to? This traffic light is like hanging. I mean, like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like 40 years ago in China. Okay? How, how did we get there? By working hard. But nonetheless, you have to see, like, you know, the, the, the market. Like, is this something? Like, oh, I... I Again, I forgot what I was talking about. So, I was talking about the market. Is there a market for the life coach in America? Yes, because life here was so good that you guys stopped trying. Everybody got lazy, and here jumps in the life coaches making money off of you. Hey, I promise you, after uh, you pay me $5,000 life coach fee, I make sure that you will stay in track, you will be disciplined. Of course you would. After $5,000, you're not gonna do what she tell you to do? Exactly same thing I'm telling you for free. That's the market. That's the market. You have a market now. There's tons of lazy people there, okay? Try to get creative to get their money. That's what business is. So, let's go back to what I'm doing, permanent makeup. What is the market? According to the statistics, globally, permanent makeup uh, market sizes is 1.5 billion dollars in 2020 and it's expecting to grow uh, 6.4 uh, up until 2028 so am I just doing something out of thin air I created and nobody even knows about that it's fairly new I had to educate a lot of people but there's a huge market demand in there lash extension is the same it's 1.1 billion dollars I think the actual number is a little bit higher but nonetheless uh, so that's the statistics in 2023 and it's also growing okay a lot of people come do training with me they're like am i gonna be able to make it can people would people pay for me what are you talking about there's the market is so saturated I'm like no how many people do you think each lash artist can handle just because truck is doing that and i'm doing it you think you run out of business the girls in this room 
alone, let's assume that you you um let's assume that you're all willing to pay for me and willing to pay my price, okay? The people in this room alone is gonna make me an extremely successful business. Just this many people. Just this many people for lash business to make me multiple uh, six-figure uh, artist. As long as you're coming on time to your uh, to your appointment and you stay with me, right? And you live in a city that has over six million people. Let's cut off the guys. Uh, uh, you know, half of it, three million people. You couldn't pick up this many people. You're not trying hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. So here's the thing. I encourage you guys to be so creative to do whatever you want, whether it's lash extension or it's photography, whatever that is, go out there and do it because you will never fail. I don't know who the hell tell people that, oh, you try something, you might fail. There's no such thing. You either will learn or you make it. And I know it sounds cliche because every day you're improving. That's what intelligence is. That's what intelligence is. Why do you think now everybody's so scared of AI? Why? It's taking people's jobs. Yeah, but and then also the intelligence, it's improving upon itself. And that's why it was so scary that people who invented it, they couldn't even get a handle of itself. Why? Because once they put it out there, that thing is improving upon itself. That's what intelligence is. And you were born with it. You were born with it. And that is why I said you cannot fail. You cannot fail. There's no such thing. You learn. You learn. You get better. Maybe today my business is lash extension and lip blushing. Who knows my next business can be whatever the hell. I don't know. I will get there when I get there. But guess what I learned throughout this process? If you think that I closed my shop, don't think that I lost or I failed. No, I learned so good at acquiring customers. I got so good at giving a speech. Who knows, maybe next time I'm the life coach. <laughs> right? I'm telling you. So you never fail in business, okay? Are you guys mostly business students? Yes. Are you? I went to medical school. <laughs> I, I didn't even go to med uh, business school. I have no business uh, knowledge. I learned by doing it and you guys can too, okay? So I think I'm gonna end it here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I hope I didn't bore you guys. So far, nobody fell asleep on me or left. So I think I did a decent job. Any questions? for that question okay and I'm being very sincere and honest when I tell you guys this sometimes you uh, whether on social media or sometimes you go to certain seminars you're gonna get the not real answer but I'm gonna tell you the real answer in some retrospect I wouldn't have done anything differently why because I learned so much by all the right decisions and most importantly by all the wrong decisions okay so for example, I started too big. I got myself a big spacious uh, studio. I thought I was gonna hire people to do it. And did I have any experience? Yes, I was managing a multi-million dollar medical spa. I have hired, fired people, like I have done all of that stuff. But it was never from my own pocket, okay? So the struggle was different. And that's something that I didn't understand until I start doing it myself. And once I got myself in the water, I'm like, oh crap. It's not easy to deal with people. It's not easy to deal with the stress of, okay, if my staff are not making money, or if I'm paying them less, it doesn't make me happier. It makes me more stressed because I'm thinking like, this girl burned gas to come here. This girl probably like, you know, could have worked in a McDonald's to make at least $15 an hour. She's not making it here. 
it keeps me up at night okay so those are the things that I learned by making those costly mistakes so answer that question my first answer is I wouldn't have done anything differently I mean I learned as a person the personal development that I have throughout this two years is so significant I don't think if someone even paid me more money as a paycheck I could have learned that myself okay and I think this is gonna significantly help me in my future but my second question is what are the mistakes that I have done first of all I think that I should have probably uh, start smaller figure out exactly what I needed to do um, and then how my like I another thing that I personally make the mistake and most people make mistake is like we make the business about us that's the biggest mistake that you can make because if you make the business about you you will really fast turn into an entrepreneur if you make the business out of about your client you're golden because you're constantly figure trying to figure out how to serve their needs therefore a direct translation into money it's that easy it's really that easy so in that regards like I could have gotten a smaller studio start small profit out of my business instead of just like slaving for my business and then I would have uh, you know structured my business a little bit better uh, instead of working too hard I could have worked a little bit smarter but I also wanted to stress working hard is extremely important especially uh, in today's this generation <laughs> I wanted to really stress that it's not easy okay it's not easy you really have to work for it but is it worth it oh my god you have no idea I would never ever in my life go work for somebody else anymore never just never I rather take a huge pay cut to work for myself because I know that I'm constantly learning and improving myself it's just the matter of next best thing okay so any other questions how did you find out that like lashes was a business that you wanted to start with like what was your journey from saying okay I'm in medical school to okay I can do anything in the world but I'm gonna choose like uh, lashes and, and lip fillers to start or not lip fillers sorry but how did you how could you figure out what your passion was um, that you went to start a business out of great question um, I have kind of different uh, answers for that so for, exa uh, for example um, just from a technical perspective right lash extension makes a great business because of the consistency in it first of all everybody can turn into my uh, client right it's easy to convince people to do lash extension another thing is once they're hooked once they become your client they come back they come back they keep coming back so I have about 20 uh, lash extension clients, regular clients that are making my business. They're paying my bills. Okay? You don't need that large of a client pool to, to make a business. So for those reasons, it's a great business. And then another thing is like, they're here every two weeks. I know every of their dirty secrets and family history, everything. Okay, there goes to your question, consistent income, okay? If, if I rely on a boss, he can fire me any day. If I rely on my skill, it's more consistent than you can think of compared to a paycheck. Why? Because my clients are literally calling me, getting pissed off the day that my kid got sick that I have to take her to a, a doctor, I have to reschedule her client, uh, appointment. Oh man, that's her birthday. Or her boyfriend is taking her on a date. How more consistent can it get? They're at my door every two weeks. So that's one of the reasons that Eyelash Extension is an amazing business, at least for me, for also for most, for most people. Another thing is like, how did I identify that passion, right? So passion sometimes can be really overrated okay I can be passionate about anything what the heck if it's not making me money if I cannot stay in the business my passion means nothing that's the truth okay but your passion doesn't matter it does matter
So on a tough day that you can say, you know what, I think I'm going to hang in here a little longer. That's where passion matters. I'm doing something at least I enjoy. I'm not making money, but let me hang on a little a longer. That's where passion uh, comes to, to play. But do you have to have passion? I mean, it's good if you do, but and then also at the same time, like you have to make money, right? So money was one of the driven factor for me. It, it keeps bringing clients for me, right? And I don't have to spend so much money on marketing to uh, bring clients. It lowers my customer acquisition cost. So that's one reason, right? And then another thing is, uh, so going from medical to this, I'm an immigrant and I don't want to go into too much detail of it because we're going to be here all night. Uh, I had so much struggles through my immigration journey in the past 10 years. If you're not a first generation immigrant, I know if you're a second generation immigrant, like you tell your parents story and then you're struggling a little bit, but as a first generation, it's a hundred times harder. Okay. So I went through a lot in order to gain my, uh, like, you know, a citizenship and all of that stuff. So through, uh, and also I became a single mom eight years ago. Desperation really is magic. It's good stuff. It, it really is. It really is. I was a really spoiled brat growing up. Both of my parents are doctors. I grew up not in a filthy rich family, but in a really well off family. I was comfortable. I was extremely intelligent. That's why I made it to medical school. Intellectually, I was extremely uh, intelligent. But my emotional intelligence wasn't there because my parents never let me work until I graduated college. I never had a job. My very first job was in America, actually. I got to work real fast out of desperation because if I don't pay bills, I'm on the street. If any one of you have a hard life, appreciate it because that's the best teacher. That is gonna drive you out of the door more than your parents nagging, more than anything, right? So because of the desperation I need to provide and instead of uh, going back to school, which I actually really want to, I came here initially as an F1 student, F1 uh, student visa. I couldn't because of money and because of my situation. And that's why I pivot into business and now I love it. I still have a dream of going back to school and next time definitely won't be medical school. I think I wanted to uh, get an MBA, but nonetheless, you know, you find your passion along the way sometimes, you know, but uh, I don't know if I answer your question. So money and, and the flexibility and all of those uh, reasons. Okay. Yes. How did you get the idea of doing lab shows? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I started my business uh, because I thought I was going to hire people and then it was a non-toxic nail salon. That idea failed really quick and miserably. I didn't. The reason why I got into lash extension is because at the time I went to beauty schools because when I wanted to open my business, I wanted to at least have some sort of like a license to back up. So in case all of my staff just like threw their hand in the air, I can be able to do something, right? So I went and I went to uh, beauty school. They told me for nail a license, I have to invest at close to like seven months, seven, eight months time, but at least at that school. So I'm like, that's a lot of time, you know? And then they told me like, oh, lash extension is $230, uh, 230 hours in Texas for specialty license. I'm like, cool, let me do that. And I went in and I learned about it and I started learning about the potentials and uh, whatnot. Uh, so that's that, okay? Any other questions? You're talking about retail? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing, uh, guys. Like like I said earlier, a lot of people want to, like, especially this day and age, being an entrepreneur is so popular, right? 
it's a thing now but do you know what entrepreneur means the word entrepreneur do you know what that means oh. It's innovator. Anybody knows what entrepreneur means? None of you? Let me change the question. How many uh, one of you want to be an entrepreneur? Raise your hand. The ones that want to. Don't be, don't be shy, it's okay. Okay. You all want to be an entrepreneur, you didn't bother to look it up what entrepreneur means. That means someone who wants to take a risk. Someone who is a risk taker. That's what the word entrepreneur means. Going back to your question, is it saturated and this and that? Absolutely, it is saturated. So you either have to create something extremely new or you gain so much influence yourself personally that you can convince people to buy whatever the crap you're selling one way or another. Did I answer your question? So either get, you guys learn about licensing and the proprietary tree and this and that, all of this stuff, a patent and whatnot, don't you? Yeah? I hope so. I want to know like, if we need to have a class on that. You, you guys should, because like I said, I didn't go to a business school. Like these are the things that, you know, because I'm interested in business, I went and, uh, you know, like I uh, digged out and like, you know, learned about it myself. If there's interest, you will find a way. Okay, if there is an interest, you will find a way. Okay, you can turn it off actually. Yeah, I think that's enough. Any other questions? No, good? Okay. One, thank you. One last thing that I wanted to say, you guys can grab a bag here. Uh, so I brought you guys uh, some uh, uh, gift bags. And I also have a sheet here that you guys can sign up uh, if you're interested in any of the services that we offer or like, you know, the trainings that we offer, you can write it down. Anybody who signs up here, they're gonna uh, put you into a raffle and we're gonna select like uh, three or four girls to uh, four people. If guys, you can give it to your girlfriend, I don't know. Uh, so like guys we're gonna do, too. oh yeah. Uh, so we can uh, give you free service. We'll, we're gonna pick three people, okay? So on your way out, you can grab a bag and sign up. Okay, any other questions? No? Well, thank you so much thank for you. having me here. It's such a pleasure. I hope I was in uh, any help to you guys. And thank you for spending the evening with me. Okay? Thank you so much for coming. Seriously, I hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah. Please sign up for... Uh,